Welcome back fellow pioneers, you're Mr. Kit here again with the first video on how to tame bone creatures. Alright, let's get right into the action. For taming bone creatures, first of all, you need a summoning altar. We'll get to that in just a second, I will show you where it is. I've done some research, some research beforehand and some exploring, I know where one is right now. To explain and elaborate on summoning altars, they will spawn at 12 p.m. wherever you might be playing, wherever you are. Once it hits 12 p.m. for you, they will spawn at random positions on the map. They will stay for a continuous 12 hours before they disappear again. So that's the first thing that you need. You need a summoning altar. If you look on the map and you follow my arrow where it's pointing, you will see that we're pointing at a beige-ish looking map with three colored dots on it. Blue, yellow and red. That is a burial ground. Biome. Those are the biomes where skeletal creatures live. You can defeat skeletal creatures to get following things. Void energy, primal bone pieces and bones, which you need for crafting stuff. Void energy is used to give skeletal creatures the ability to sprint and some of them actually get secondary abilities with the void energy. We'll get to that later too. So once you've located a summoning altar and you have gotten yourself a blueprint, let's get to the blueprints. These are the blueprints for skeletal creatures. Today we're going to tame a rex, which is actually a pretty useful dinosaur to tame for several different reasons. Normal rexes are already very useful. Bone rexes take this to a whole nother level. So since we're taming a bone rex, let's take this blueprint with us. So we have it in the inventory. Blueprint Rex Skull Fossil. You get these fossils from defeating the skeletal creatures themselves. So you defeat a bone ghost dragon. He will potentially drop the blueprint for a ghost dragon skull. So you can summon him. Same thing with mega rock dragons, griffins, all of that. So you defeat the creatures and they have a chance of dropping a blueprint. You can also get a blueprint from the Bone Wyvern King, which is also I would say the most efficient way to get the saddles to ride bone creatures. Alright, so we have the blueprint here, the red skull fossil. So let's take a look at it. We need 40 spine fossils and 40 thigh bone fossils. So let's take that with us. I already went to the island, set up a little trap beforehand. That's why I have some fossils on me here. I mined those while I was there. So let's take a look. Thigh bone, we have here. So let's just take a hundred with us. We can drop that wing bone fossil in here. And there is two spare thigh bone. We can actually drop those in here. Um, and we need spine fossils. So that would be this one. Let's take a hundred of those as well. As you can see, it turned not red. Like it turned into like a transparent bluish like color, which means it's craftable now because I have, as you can see right there, enough fossils to craft it. I can't craft it on the spot though. I have to get to a summoning altar. So that's what we'll do next. All right, and here we are. We have made it to the summoning altar. This is what they look like right here. This is a skeleton summoning altar. It says right there, summoning altar. You open this inventory and you drop your stuff in here. And you can see I can summon it now. Before we do that though, let me explain some things to you. As you can see here, I got really, really lucky because there's a carved out hole. As you can see, there's some carnals spawning down here. Let's get rid of them real quick. All right. As you can see, there's like a pre-generated hole by the game, which actually is gonna help me out a whole lot. As you can see right here, I built a dirt wall to protect this opening that was here from a dinosaur that is in this hole, potentially falling off while it's trying to run away. So you need something like this. Uh, if you're familiar with Ark, you have seen many people build a trap, maybe like out of behemoth gates, giant beast gates. I think they have somewhat different names in this game, depending on what material they're out of. But like the biggest size gate is usually not a bad idea because it's gonna take you like it's gonna take you a lot of time otherwise to build it just with blocks. So placing just gates in a like square formation is probably your best way to go it is a little bit harder to close the gates on a dinosaur though trying to lure um, your prey into the trap so if the creatures can't fly this whole idea is actually it might work out the best for you it's 
I don't know, you could try out yourself. I like doing this with creatures that don't fly. As soon as I'm taming something flying, like a griffin, a dragon, anything like that, I will build a trap. And I will use my uh, Cobalt Terranon to get it into the trap. Because these things are actually quite small, so they can fit through tiny spaces. So you just leave a little empty space on top of the trap and you will fly out through it and close the game. gate behind you. Fly around the trap, close the gate. You kind of have to time it well and it will be stuck in there and you can just shoot it from the outside. Well, it can't really hurt you. It still can hit you. You have to watch out. But it will be a lot easier than, say, you would be in the open field here and just running after the creature trying to tame it. So we have our stuff in here, let's start the summoning process. Click on the skull and you summon. While we wait for this, I will start explaining a tiny little bit on how to write these things. Because just getting the fossils and the blueprints and summoning them, then taming them, that isn't only half the story. Because if you tame a dinosaur in Ark or in Pixar, you usually want to ride it. You want to do stuff with it. With bone creatures, those saddles are actually quite hard to come by. So you have two options. Number one option, you go over here. We actually have one of these on this island as well. Keep in mind, not every burial ground will have this um, ruin, basically, that I'm about to show you. But every burial ground, as long as the size supports it, I guess, will have the chance to spawn one on your map. So might want to make sure in your seed or whatever map you're playing on that you have one of these first. That right there, if you see that bluish thing that my crosser is pointing at, that is the Bone Wyvern King Altar. So as soon as I will get close to it, I will not do that right now because that's not the point of this video, but as soon as I get close to it, a Bone Wyvern King will spawn on the platform. If you beat him, he has around 790,000 HP if I remember correctly. If you beat him, he drops like he has a chance to drop a bunch of different stuff but one of the things that you definitely want is the bone saddles for the creatures in my opinion beating the bone Wyvern king is the most effective way of getting the bone saddles there is other ways you can beat cobalt ruins like trader stations for the cobalt creatures like the aliens and you can get it from the cobalt star captain um, and there's also a one percent chance that the saddle for the creature will drop once you defeat it but again it's a one percent chance so don't count on it skeletal creatures are not the easiest creatures to beat and on average beating a hundred of them to get one saddle for it it's just it's not worth your effort trust me you might get lucky like when you're farming void energy or you're killing them for primal bone pieces or trying to get a blueprint and he drops one good for you you got lucky that's very nice but i wouldn't count on getting your saddles from the creatures themselves you want to keep you want to kill the bone ring king to get your saddles to ride them all right um we're gonna take a little break here we'll be back with you once this rex spawns and we'll get to the taming process to give you a little spoiler it won't be all too difficult we're gonna hit him once and aggro him and get him into this hole right here once he's in this hole i already checked with other dinosaurs he can't really get out of it i can see a little weakness here let's fix this real quick so this is something that you might want to keep an eye on as well if you just take natural holes to trap these creatures rexes are actually pretty tricky on what they will step on and can like climb up upon so this right here with the two block that might have been enough i'm not sure i'm doing it for safety so we don't waste our time but it might have been enough for uh, the rex once he's in here to just like make his way up there and climb out of that little like a ledge that we have here but i think now we should be good it's at least three deep i don't think we can make it up here so yeah that's the point i will be back with you once the rex spawns and there he is not as good as the first one that ran away from me. That one was a level 38, it's just a level 19, but we'll take it. The first one actually had like, like orange bubbles coming out of his body. That basically means it's a very strong variant of the creature that it is. So like, as you can see, I adjusted the hole. It's perfect now. He's not going anywhere. The first time that looked a lot different, I can tell you. I'll put the, I'll put a short clip of what happened with the first Rex at the end of the video. Uh, I can't actually believe that I missed that shot, okay. Uh, I'll put it at the end of the video so you can see what actually happens. Um, because it was actually quite weird. The ways that the routes that he took actually insane. I didn't even know that was possible. 
But yeah, I, as you can see now, the hole is fixed. He's not going anywhere. But um, that's exactly why I want you in the first part of the video. Like these, these things are tricky. Like they will, they will like climb pretty much anything. And like one little cube somewhere in the wrong spot, like over there, if it would lead up, that would be probably already too much. And he'll probably get out. Like <laughs> make sure you pick, uh, you build a big enough hole. <laughs> And now he's not going anywhere and she's getting stuck on stuff. We'll take it. It's actually really nice. So as you can see on the screen already, you need magic tranquilizer darts to knock them out. Anything else will, will not raise their torpor and just damage them and you will eventually kill it. So make sure you use magic tranquilizer darts. reason why I keep clicking over to the left is because there's actually some bone cardinals spawning over there from time to time so I want to make sure that they don't get to jump on me. Actually forgot my spyglass at my base so I can't really check out the torpor of this guy but we should get there sometime soon. Oh right there we can see he's on 9000 out of 38. So you actually see it takes quite a while for him to actually like knock out. It's not a short endeavor, so you might want to make sure that you have enough time to do this. And again, this is not the most perfect island to do this at since it's a bird around the island. There's tons of like skeletal creatures all around. So you might want to wait in your instance, you might want to wait for the step for the portal to be in a favorable location for you, so a less dangerous area maybe. Or you maybe can even wait for it to spawn on your island where you have your base built and you can lure him into your dino pen or something. That's what I've been doing before. They have a chance of spawning at any island, so including the one that you built your base on. So one day you will probably get lucky and it will be around your base. Yep, he's not getting up here either. I like it. Can okay, his tail, okay. And as you can see, like he's actually trying to run away quite a bit. So if we don't have this hole, we will be chasing him all over the place. And you can see uh, at the end of the video where we put the footage of the one that actually jumped off the edge, he tried to run away up there and he came over that little like bridge that was left there in the first part. Like I, I advise you to watch the video till the end and see what happened because it's gonna help you out. I thought we were safe and turns out we weren't so. Good example of what not to do. <laughs> like you can see it here, he's actually biting me and he can get up a decent sized way. Like it, this is also quite good to demonstrate what just happened there. Like he got a bite off on me. That was actually pretty damn, pretty damn unlikely to happen, but it did. So you can see the reach and the climbing abilities of these things are actually a lot better than, would, than you would expect them to be. To make sure my parandon is okay too over there. Alright, so now it's just about knocking him out. And on this occasion, we will actually tame him up with raw meat, uh, raw meat with uh, meat jerky. So it might take quite a bit for him to tame up. We'll, we're gonna take a break there too. But again, as I mentioned in my first intro videos to the series, you are really gonna wanna invest some time in learning how to do kibble. I will make a video about it fairly shortly about it. So you might wanna watch that as well because there is nothing even close to as good to tame animals than kibble. But just for the sake here that we're assuming that you don't know how to make kibble and you want to tame one of these, they will take meat. Prime meat works faster obviously than meat jerky. I don't have any prime meat on me or on in the base right now, so we'll just use normal meat jerky. It's gonna take a little longer, but it's not like it's gonna matter to you. Griffin over here might be a problem. Yep, yep, take care of him real quick. Oh, that was bad. That's not what we wanted. Alright, here we go. We're back. Took 
care of this griffin. And we can go back to taming the rocks. Which is actually right down there. And you still can't hit his tail. Shoot him in the butt instead. Another griffin. Yeah, like in Skeleton Islands, these griffins is what you want to look out for because they're actually pretty annoying. And if you don't have a pterodon or something, like something bigger, less mobile, it's actually quite difficult to kill them. Since they move fast, they, tr they like to circle you in the air. It's not really fun. Oh, and we drop in the hole with the rocks. Try and get out of here. Tech suit. Thanks to the tech suit, we were able to do that. Again, don't fall in this hole because you will most likely not have the luxury of just flying that out of here. You can obviously beforehand build like a little stairway that will help you get out or build like a little tunnel that leads you back up. I used to do that in the beginning, but ever since I got the tech armor, it's actually a lot easier. And we have a freaking phone ghost dragon on us. As you can see, like skeleton islands, highly inadvisable to spawn these things in because there's going to be trouble all around all the time. So I highly advise to wait till it's in a more favorable location. I picked this location because it actually turns out perfect with the natural hole and yet we still had mishaps happen. Let's hope he doesn't decide to wander over here. Mm, he might. And as you can see, multiple instances already, like these things like to move around, they don't like to stay in one place. That's for dinosaurs that take quite a bit of time to tame anyways, like they like to try to run away, try to escape from you. I think the most annoying creature that I could probably happen with, it is the Bone Ghost Dragon, because it actually takes quite a while to knock out, and you will, like, I think around two to three times during your taming process, he will start running away, meaning he just flies in a random direction away from you so make sure you trap him and don't just ah right there we go he's unconscious um so we're gonna tame this boy up and we'll be back once we do as i said already we're gonna put some meat into him regular meats and you can see he's taming um obviously like i already stated prime meat or kibble will work a lot better a lot faster but just for this video and since i don't have any of this stuff around or on me right now we'll use meat um, we'll be back once this boy tames up, we'll put blocks in, bring him back to base, and I'll show you what he can do. Alright guys, here we have it. We're back at base with our Bone Rex, the tamed one, as you can see here. Let's look at his stats real quick. 45,000 health, 3,000 stamina, a whole bunch of oxygen, 24k food, 140% damage. So you see, these things are actually really powerful. So Bone Rexes you want to use for anything that is fighting anything. Boss fights, rooms, whatever you might do that involves fighting other dinos, these things are probably the most useful thing out there to do so. So as we've already went over the, in the first part of the video, you need these saddles which you get from the bone burn kings to even ride them and i've mentioned the void energy so goes in their inventory just like anything else in arc let's put some meat in here too that he will feel nice and this void energy is actually quite quite useful in these things so like if i would be on this dinosaur without void energy this is the speed that i'm moving at 
and as you see it's pretty darn slow but as soon as he has void energy you actually give him the ability to sprint which is way way faster your void energy consumption will also be like visible on these dinos which is on the top right hand side on the very bottom you can see a little like bone heart looking thing i guess so like a rib cage there you will see the status of your void energy and that is one void energy it's not the entirety of the void energy in your dinosaur's inventory it is one void energy so if that is depleted you will lose one void energy inside your dino's inventory and now to the really fun part with these things if you put void energy in a bone rex he can do this and fly away <laughs> It's actually quite entertaining. It's not like it's fast. It's actually more in like slow-mo variation, but it can be useful. I mean, he has 45,000 health. If you can just take a Rex and make him levitate somewhere, pretty damn useful, I would say. And he lands again. So probably the most useful thing about them, aside from them having 45,000 health when you tame them and being quite strong to begin with. Um, that's it for the video. I hope to have you with me for the next one too. We're gonna go over a bunch more bone creatures How to tame them what they're useful for. I hope to have you with me for that as well This is mr. Kit checking out catch you on the next one So my blocking off plan with putting the dinosaur here not terrible at the moment I say he's gonna jump off the edge isn't he? And he probably died to that